When it comes to video in news gathering, I think a crucial change now is how much easier it has become to get video from the place at which news is happening into our system, out onto the web, out to our viewers. I believe it's accurate to say there are over a billion cameras floating around in people's pockets around the world in their cell phones, in their Blackberries, in their various mobile devices. Those are all potential news gathering sources. So a generation ago, journalists relied on eyewitnesses. Now we have an army of eyewitnesses who potentially recorded the event or the aftermath uh, or the comment. Uh, and I think that's just a tremendous, tremendous resource for journalists to use if they're smart about it. And how do you guys use it at NBC News? We use it by making call-outs on any major news event that's breaking. We certainly call out quickly through all our social media channels, on the web, on air, for contributions from people who happen to be there or people who might be there. We encourage them to get to us as quickly as they can. We have a technology for that called First Person at firstperson.msnbc.com where we solicit and can take in that content right into our publishing system very quickly. A key point here though is, and I've said this often, that in and of itself isn't journalism. Those are eyewitnesses with cameras. They're great. Often they tell a very compelling story and a very accurate story, but we have to vet it. We have to make sure before we pass it on to our audience uh, under NBC News that we're sure of the content, that we have multiple sourcing on a particular story. We, we all know there have been examples of user-generated content that's flown out onto the internet uh, unfiltered and has turned out to be flat wrong uh, or even damaging in some cases. So, so you do have to be careful about that aspect of it. But we're getting better at that and I think the systems are getting better and faster to, to do that sort of vetting. And one last question about the video bloggers and some of the original video with Brian Williams and the, you know, sort of the original web-only mm -hmm. content. What's What's going on there? What's the plan? How that, how's that working out? It's a tremendous outlet for our journalists to have that platform. There are often situations where you do a story and something ends up on the cutting room floor, not because it's bad, but because there just wasn't time or because it didn't really fit the narrative of that particular story you were telling that particular night. Um, or there's something that happened in the background of producing a story that's fascinating. We now have, obviously, more and more ways to serve that up and to let our journalists, sometimes a producer who produced a story written by a correspondent, the producer will take on his or her own voice to tell that story online or in a, in a mobile platform. I can't say that there's a master plan there, sort of this is a particular kind of way to do it. I think we're just encouraging everybody across the organization to experiment, to tell good stories, because at the end of the day, what I keep coming back to, this is about telling stories with pictures. That is what we do for a living. We have more platforms than ever to do it with. There are more people consuming stories with pictures, video storytelling, than ever before. That is all good for us, and we should continue to push the boundaries of that, to experiment, to find new ways to do it uh, that are fascinating. Not just ways led by technology, but ways led by, by framing stories differently and narrating stories differently and creating new ways to actually tell the story with all these great tools we have.